The Tudor dynasty, which ruled for about 121 eventful years, was responsible for the birth of five monarchs who are considered to be some of the most notorious and controversial rulers throughout history. It was unavoidable that the Tudor's prosperous, difficult, intrigue-filled, and war-torn century would be filled with death, the majority of which occurred at the hands of the merciless King Henry VIII. Historians have estimated that King Henry VIII was responsible for the deaths of between 57,000 and 72,000 people. His three children, Edward VI, Mary I, and Elizabeth I, also had the blood of a great number of victims on their hands. These numbers may be exaggerated, but they were nonetheless responsible for the deaths of countless people. Because of their politics, their views, or the passion in their hearts, a few influential women have sacrificed their lives. Margaret Ward Because there is so little known about Margaret Ward's childhood, her early life has been shrouded in secrecy ever since it was first documented. However, it is well known that she was born in Congleton, which is located in the county of Cheshire, and that she later worked as a maid in the household of a woman named Whittall in London. It had been brought to Margaret's attention that a priest by the name of Richard Watson was being held captive, hungry, and tortured at Bridewell Prison. Bridewell Prison is a repurposed palace in London that is used to punish those who are disruptive and to accommodate homeless children. Margaret hatched a scheme to aid Watson in evading capture shortly after he was transferred to a more spacious cell. She arranged for a boat to take the priest to safety and then sneaked a rope to him so that he could safely lower himself from the prison to the ground. This allowed him to escape without injury. After the plot was discovered to be a failure, Margaret was taken into custody and interrogated while being tortured. Margaret boldly stated on the record during her trial eight days later that she never once regretted delivering that innocent man from the hands of those bloody wolves. Margaret, a devoted Catholic, was given the option to attend services at an Anglican church where she could pray to Queen Elizabeth the Fart and ask for forgiveness for her crimes, or she may be executed by hanging by the neck. She refused to beg, thus on August 30th, 1588, she was put to death for her refusal. On October 25th, 1970, Margaret Ward was honored and canonized for her role as a martyr in the Christian faith. After that, people started referring to her as St. Margaret Ward. Elizabeth Barton. Elizabeth Barton was born in 1506 and was diagnosed with epilepsy when she was a young girl. Elizabeth fell ill with a condition that caused her to experience hysteria when she was working as a servant at the home of Thomas Cobb, who was the supervisor of the estate belonging to the Archbishop of Canterbury. Her fits, sometimes known as trances, which could linger for many days, caused her to rage, and these rantings were later understood to be heavenly prophecies. Because of this, her popularity increased. As soon as she was able to overcome her illness, travelers began to visit Elizabeth in large numbers. She took use of her notoriety to concoct more predictions, even going so far as to claim that she had a line of communication straight to the Virgin Mary. The Archbishop developed apprehensions and decided to conduct an investigation. It was a prophecy regarding Henry VIII that ultimately decided Elizabeth's fate. It is reported that she told him that he should no longer be king of this realm and should die a villain's death if he were to divorce his existing wife, Catherine of Aragon. Catherine of Aragon was his wife at the time. Elizabeth made a confession about her treachery while she was being questioned, and she was subsequently sentenced to death for her crime. On April 20th, 1534, she and her allies were hung from the gallows at Tyburn, and their deaths were recorded in history books. Lady Jane Grey. Jane Grey joined the household of Catherine Parr, the last wife of Henry VIII, when she was just a young child of 10 years old. There, she had a staunchly Protestant upbringing and developed a deeper spirituality as she got older. After her father was elevated to the position of Duke of Suffolk in 1551, Jane first became familiar with life in the royal court. It was there that the Duke of Northumberland served as a regent for Edward VI, the son of Henry VIII, who was unable to reign because of his young age. Northumberland attempted to deny the crown to Henry's daughters, Mary I, who was a devout Catholic, and Elizabeth I, who was Edward's half-sister, in order to make way for Jane as the next royal heir, while Edward was on his deathbed from disease. Northumberland successfully persuaded the king to declare his sisters to be illegitimate, and when the monarch eventually passed away, Jane was crowned queen. 
Mary made moves to take Jane's crown, which led to the new queen's reign lasting an extremely unbelievably short amount of time. Mary was elevated to the position of queen thanks to the support of the general populace when Jane abdicated her throne after only nine days. Jane, her husband, and her father were all imprisoned in the Tower of London in 1553 for their roles in the high treason that led to their conviction by Queen Mary. The year after that, both Jane and her husband were executed by having their heads severed. Jane Boleyn Jane Parker, who was well-groomed and rich, wed into the Boleyn family in the year 1524. The Boleyn family was one of the most infamous families connected to the Tudor monarchy. It is a generally held belief that her marriage to George Boleyn began to fail shortly after they tied the knot as a direct result of his promiscuity, as well as his suspected homosexual liaisons. It was said that Jane was envious of George's sister Anne Boleyn, which made a bad situation even worse. Jane's actions contributed significantly to the downfall of both her husband and Anne, who would go on to become Queen of England. In spite of the fact that Jane had plotted in the past against those who were in court, she waited 11 years before she attacked her husband. She testified that George and Queen Anne had an incestuous relationship and implied that George was the father of a child that Anne had miscarried. After a number of years had passed, Jane discovered herself in the thick of yet another failed marriage. It was King Henry VIII and Anne of Cleves who were involved in this particular affair. Their marriage was declared null and void in part due to the testimony provided by Jane, who stated that the couple's union had never been consummated. After playing a role in the arrangement of covert meetings between Queen Catherine Howard and her sweetheart, Thomas Culpepper, Jane eventually met her end as a result of her actions. Because of this, Jane was taken into custody and questioned for several months. Before she was found to be insane, she had a mental collapse. On February 13, 1542, Jane was executed at the Tower of London by having her skull severed with a single stroke of an axe. Anne Askew Anne Askew was a defiant young woman who stood up for what she believed in by refusing to alter her surname when she was wed against her will at the age of 15. Anne was also a voracious reader of the Bible, which was against King Henry VIII's decree that women and low-ranking males were not permitted to read the Bible. Anne pursued her own path and became a Protestant despite opposition from both her church and other individuals. She was not deterred by opposition. After Anne's husband, who disapproved of her rebellious spirit, divorced her, she moved to London, where she had friends in high places and adversaries who were wary of her. After Anne's husband objected about her rebellious spirit, he left her. One of Anne's adversaries was Lord Chancellor Thomas Rothesley, who monitored her every step and kept a careful check on her activities. Anne began to publicly proclaim the doctrines that are found in the Bible. However, in 1545, she was taken into custody and accused with heresy, which brought an end to her adventures. In the end, she was exonerated because there was insufficient evidence to support her conviction. The next year, she was taken into custody once more on charges of heresy and placed in custody at the Tower of London. Anne was subjected to torture during her time there, despite the fact that she had already confessed to her crimes. Anne, remaining true to herself, refused to name other Protestants, which led to her being sentenced to death and having her execution scheduled for July 16, 1546. Due to the effects of her torment, Anne was unable to walk, so she was transported to Smithfield on a chair and then chained to a stake there. Anne was put to death by being burned at the stake because she would not publicly recant her convictions. Margaret Pole Margaret Pole was the daughter of George, Duke of Clarence, and was the niece of both Edward IV and Richard III. She was born in 1473 and was the daughter of George, Duke of Clarence. During this time period in England, a conflict known as the War of the Roses was going on. A power battle was raging in Margaret's household, and her father, who was third in line to the throne, was caught in the middle of it. Following the conclusion of the conflict, the victorious Henry Tudor was anointed as King Henry VII. However, the presence of Margaret and her brother gave the king reason to believe that an impending danger was on the horizon. As a means of restoring order, the monarch had Margaret's younger brother put to death and then married her off to Sir Richard Pole when she was just 14 years old. After the death of both the monarch and her husband, Margaret was offered a position in the household of Mary, who was Henry VIII's daughter. With her new title as Countess of Salisbury, Margaret had already amassed a significant fortune and property. 
After King Henry VIII divorced Margaret's close companion, Catherine, things started to go downhill for her. Margaret was devastated. Even after the king married Anne Boleyn and expelled all of Margaret's allies, she insisted on staying in the court. Because of a disagreement that came dangerously close to turning violent with the monarch, Reginald, Margaret's son, had chosen to live in self-imposed exile. After being elevated to the rank of cardinal by the Holy See, Reginald traveled back to England where he organized a rebellion against the reigning monarch. In order to spread Catholicism throughout England, Reginald's plan was to launch an invasion. As a result of the king's suspicions that Margaret was complicit, she was imprisoned in the Tower of London until she reached the age of 67. On the morning of her execution in 1541, the rookie executioner attempted to behead her with an axe, but missed her neck numerous times. She was eventually beheaded. Instead of punching her in the face, he struck her in the shoulder and the head. In long last, Margaret Pole, who held the record for being the oldest woman ever beheaded in the Tower of London, had her skull severed. After more than 300 years had passed, the Roman Catholic Church officially canonized Margaret as a saint. Catherine Howard Catherine Howard was King Henry VIII's lady-in-waiting when he fell in love with her. Catherine Howard was youthful, lively, and attractive at the time that Henry VIII was married to Anne of Cleves. After having his previous marriage to Anne declared null and void, Henry then married Catherine 16 days later. Henry required the distraction of his young wife, Catherine, even though she was only 19 years old, because he lived with terrible ulcers as a result of an injury he sustained while jousting. Henry was 50 years old. When Catherine began seeking the company of other men, after having spent the previous year in a state of happiness, rumors began to circulate that she was sexually active. It wasn't long before the king was informed of what had happened. At first, he was resistant to the idea that the accusations were true, but more and more evidence of his wife's extramarital affair emerged over time. In the year 1541, Catherine had an affair with Thomas Culpepper in addition to employing her ex-lover to work as her personal secretary. Catherine was indicted for treason when her many misdeeds eventually caught up with her and led to their discovery. At the age of 21, Catherine was executed by beheading at the Tower of London on February 13, 1542. Margaret Clitheroe Margaret Clitheroe had a traditional Christian upbringing in Yorkshire, England, with her family. But after being married for a few years, she made the decision to become a Catholic. Margaret had an extreme commitment to her religious practices. She helped those who had fallen away from their faith by holding Mass in her home discreetly and working to bring them back. During Queen Elizabeth's reign, laws were enacted that were intended to put an end to the practice of the Catholic religion in England. A legislation passed in 1855 prohibited priests from living in England and sentenced to death anyone who sheltered a priest. Margaret did not comply with this regulation, but it was, nonetheless, the law. The police conducted a search of Margaret's home when it was discovered that she had unlawfully transported her son to France to pursue an education in a Catholic institution there. They discovered that this location had been used for the celebration of Mass, as well as a hiding place for priests. Because of this, Margaret was taken into custody. She never made a plea and expressed a desire to avoid going to trial. In accordance with the legal standards of the time, this meant that Margaret would be pressed to death. On March 25, 1586, Margaret was positioned atop a rock and a door was erected on top of her body. Her back was broken and she was ultimately crushed to death as a result of the weight that was put against the door. She was just 30 years old at the time. Margaret was given the title of St. Margaret Clitheroe after she was canonized in 1970 and given that honor. Mary, Queen of Scots. Mary Stuart was born to King James V of Scotland and Mary of Guise, who later became Mary of Guise. It was just six days after the birth of the king's daughter in 1542 that the king's reign came to an end, which established Mary as Queen of Scots when she was still an infant. Her mother served as her regent while she was too young to take control of the kingdom on her own. Henry VIII, who had his sights set on Scotland, orchestrated the engagement of his son to Mary when she was still a young woman. However, since Henry's marriage to Anne Boleyn destroyed his links with the Catholic Church, Scottish Catholics rejected the idea of a union being formed between the two countries. Instead, Mary was deported to France to serve in the French court, and it was there that she met and wed Francis, the heir apparent to the throne of France. When Elizabeth I ascended to the throne, her crown was placed in jeopardy 
due to Roman Catholic accusations that she was unsuitable to reign and that her parents' marriage was not legally recognized. It was around this time that Mary first asserted her right to the throne. After Francis passed away in 1559 from an ear infection, Mary returned to Scotland, which had recently become Protestant, despite the theological conflicts that existed there. Later on, she tied the knot with Henry Stuart, Elizabeth's cousin, who turned out to be a cruel and callous individual. It is stated that Mary did not want to have any more contact with her husband and that she made arrangements for him to be murdered. To add insult to injury, she went ahead and tied the knot with the man who was the primary suspect in Stuart's murder. That affair proved to be the final straw for her supporters. Her new husband was banished, and she was locked up for her own protection. After narrowly escaping capture, Mary made her way to England to find safety with her cousin Elizabeth. However, the English queen did not show any pity and kept Mary in jail for a total of 18 years. After it was discovered that Mary had been involved in a plot to kill the Queen, she was tried for treason and sentenced to death for her role in the plot. On February 8, 1587, Mary Stuart was executed by beheading. Anne Boleyn Anne Boleyn was born around the year 1501, and she was initially sent to reside in France. After that, she went back to England to work as a lady-in-waiting for Catherine of Aragon, who would eventually become the Queen of England. During her time at court, Anne managed to enchant King Henry VIII, who later wrote the following words to her in a letter. If you give yourself up, heart, body, and soul to me, I will take you for my only mistress, rejecting from thought and affection all others, save yourself, to serve only you. Anne was able to convince Henry that she was the one and only woman he should ever love. Anne declined the offer to become the king's mistress at the time. Henry, in a state of desperation, spearheaded a campaign to have his marriage to Catherine annulled on the grounds that their union was an abomination in the eyes of God due to the fact that Catherine was the widow of Henry's brother and hence unable to give birth to a son because of their union. Anne became pregnant by Henry during the course of the dispute that lasted for six years between the Catholic Church and Henry. In 1533, she wed Henry against the Catholic Church's opposition to the Union. The subsequent year saw Anne elevated to the position of Queen of England, much to the consternation of the populace at large. During her time married to the King, Anne gave birth to their daughter Elizabeth. However, the two deliveries that followed both resulted in the infants being stillborn. In 1534, after finally marrying the woman of his dreams, Henry VIII severed his ties with the Catholic Church and established the Church of England. However, not long after that, the marriage started to fall apart as a result of Henry's extramarital affair and Anne's intense jealousy of him. When Anne delivered yet another baby that died shortly after birth, Henry made the decision that he intended to replace Anne with one of his mistresses, Jane Seymour. As a direct consequence of this, Anne was falsely incarcerated on a variety of accusations, including adultery and incest. On May 19, 1536, she was found guilty of her crimes and executed by having her skull severed with a single stroke of the sword. We hope you like this video, subscribe to the channel if you're a history addict, and please let us know about what civilization or time period we should talk about. Also, watch another video here.